We're currently uh, deep in the Edelbert Mountains in Papua New Guinea. Um, we're here recording the sounds of the forest. Um, and the reason we're doing this is to look at the impact of our community uh, land use conservation work. So bioacoustics are the sounds of the natural world. Um, lots of things vocalize. Um, frogs, birds, insects, um, and bats. Some are vocalizing at frequencies um, higher than we can hear, and a few are vocalizing at frequencies lower than we can hear. But over time, a lot of different animals that need to communicate through vocalization have found a particular range that they can vocalize in and a particular pattern that they can vocalize in, so they can all be heard by each other, but they don't block each other out. A really intact soundscape should have most of the different frequencies occupied, if you like. As forests get degraded or used, one of the things that tends to happen is you lose some of those spots. Some of the, as species disappear, some of those niches also disappear. So instead of having a, a fully intact um, biophony, if you like, we have a, a, a poorer one, a slightly degraded one. Now, the equipment we're using uh, small acoustic recording devices. We have two types. We have um, one for recording acoustic sounds. They're sounds that we can hear. And then we have ultrasonic recorders, which are largely for recording sounds that we can't hear. To deploy this equipment, we look at the land use plan of a community. We look where they have the forest zone. We look where they have the hunting zone. Um, we look where they have the gardening zone and the conservation zone and we trek, we, we put our backpacks on and we carry the equipment into the middle of those zones um, and then in sort of great discomfort, um, surrounded by clouds of mosquitoes and sweating profusely, take the recordings we do and strap them to a tree. We then leave them for a full day. They have 24 hours of recording and then we trek back in there and collect them another day and move to another community and do the same thing. So we work with 11 communities here in the Edelberts already and they've all done these land use plans. But we've got this issue that we don't have really good evidence yet of how big these forest conservation patches need to be to sustain the sort of species that these communities are interested in, in, in conserving, which include incredible species like birds of paradise, bowerbirds. So what this work will tell us is whether the patches are big enough to retain uh, their full acoustic diversity and then um, by inference the biodiversity. We're really trying to get a landscape scale picture of bioacoustics, which is incredibly unusual. Um, and the Edelberts is a perfect place to test it out. There is basically no anthropogenic interference. Um, we're so far from a road, so far from people um, when we're in these forest areas that we get a really pure sound.